Hello, welcome back to another episode of Teardown Tuesday. I'm Jack in the training department, and today we've got something a little interesting. This is a 90 degree drive, so it's a reduction gearbox drive, and it looks brand new. It still has the capacitor tape to it even. But it came out of a, a technician's truck stock, and I think I know what happened. Not entirely sure, but I think I know. I do not know what this was intended to go in, but I would guess it's some kind of slow moving, possibly like a conveyor oven drive. There is some shipping damage, some pieces are bent, but first part here, we have a capacitor. And if we look at the rating tag on the capacitor, we can see this is 1.2 microfarad. And it looks like it's plus 10 minus 5%. Looks like plus 10, minus 5%. So, set that off the side. The, the real question is here on the rating plate. So it tells us that we are dealing with a single phase motor, pH is 1. It's an induction motor. It's 230 volt, one third horsepower, has a 200 to 1 ratio, needs a, a 1.2 microfarad capacitor, runs at 1,350 RPM. But the thing that really makes this stand out, and the reason that it's probably in my scrap pile, is this right here, 50 hertz. I would guess that what happened is the part number for this motor was grabbed out of a parts manual that also had part numbers for international products. And this motor, was designed to go into an overseas application in Europe or possibly Japan that used 50 hertz line current. Now we could hook this up and run it here in the US, but it will not actually give us the 1350 RPM that it's designed for. So that is what I think happened. I think somebody probably ordered this using a part number that was meant for a European or a Japanese model oven. And once they received the part, they didn't return it. So it's set so long that we end up with it in our scrap pile. But let's start down here on the end. We'll open this up. We've got three wires. The three wires we've got are kind of a, a pinkish beige color, a black and a gray. And it's not clear from the, the labeling on this what exactly those go to. But let's get it opened up and see what we find. So we've got all our screws out. Oh, nice. So you can see the end cap here does not have any moving parts in it, but it does have a very nicely machined bore here for the bearing to sit in. This is the end bearing, and you can see it's got a, a couple of shims, and the shims are acting almost like uh, small springs, but that's setting part of the lash in this motor. So as this moves in and out, the, the stator itself is down inside there. The bearings pressed, press fit onto it. But all around the outside here, these are the motor windings. And it looks like there's a little thermal protection. Looks like a little thermal protection in there too. Does it say it's thermally protected? Yeah, it does. So it does say it's thermally protected. And this is what that is. That's a small little thermal switch down inside the windings. So if we pull this out, chances are we're going to disengage it from the drive box, and I don't want to do that yet. So let's give that a moment here before we completely pull that out, and let's open up the inside of the drive. And in this particular assembly, you can see we these are similar to a Torx, but not quite, right? These are an Allen or a, a hex head. And you can see the Allen key that we're going to use to open it up. Now, let's see if we can get this open. Thank you. 
really tight fit. There, it's starting to go. Yep. Oh, wow. Wow, look at that. Oh my gosh. I would not have guessed that, that was how this was all put together. So this big drive spindle is the first part, and that's where the actual keyed shaft is. But you can see the cover has an o-ring seal all the way around it, has bearings pressed into it. And then it's got these secondary drives off the side. And then it's got this drive here that actually converts, and you can see down inside there. And you can see the, the actual hypoid style gear that engages into this tooth. I'll have to wipe some of that grease off so you can see what's going on there. But this style gear is used to give us that rotary motion, that change in direction. So this sits in this orientation and it rotates and then it cogs into and drives this hypoid gear. That is an interesting little setup. And you can tell this grease has been around a while because it has started to decompose. It's liquefying down inside there. But let's grab a towel real quick and clean that up. Alright, so there you can you can see the intricate machine work that's done on the end of this to create that tooth pattern. And that tooth pattern requires a very careful positioning in relation to this gear. So to get that to actually slot in there, it can't be down here and it can't be up here. It's got to be just in the right spot up here and then it meshes all together. So it's got to have a very precise relationship. That's part of why this casting is so stout, because it can't really flex a whole lot without damaging the teeth on these gears. So we're driving through that first reduction into this gear. And you can see we've got a smaller reduction here into this larger gear, and then we've got another small reduction off the top of that shaft into our final drive. And the label said that would give us 200 to 1. There is certainly enough gearing here to, to do that. Good sized bearings, big ball bearings. This is a really heavy built drive. Notice though there is not any kind of position sensing. There's no encoders in here. There's no switches or, or any kind of movement control. All we've got is the windings of the motor. Let me give you a better view of those. All we've got are the windings of the motor. Interesting setup. Not sure what I'm going to do with this. This might be a neat cutaway. Might be a good cutaway to, to demonstrate how this all works. But that's it on this one. As far as failure goes, this kind of drive typically doesn't have any one weak failure point. What will eventually happen is things will just wear out. Bearings wear out, gears wear out, grease breaks down, uh, heat, in, heat interacting with that grease will break it down even faster and then the drive will start to, to fail. You could potentially damage the motor windings, but you would really have to either over voltage or, or lock rotor this to, to kill those motor windings.
It's a pretty stout setup. All right, thanks for joining. Hi folks, my name is Jack Kell and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. If you're already a SmartCare technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.